Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is shared. In this episode I'll show how to program the STM32 using the USB bootloader. All the STM32 microcontrollers come with a pre-programmed bootloader. It depends on the microcontroller you have. It has different options that you can program the device either through UART, I2C, SPI, CANBUS and USB. In order to better find out what options you have in the bootloader, it is best to start with AN2606 from SD. In this PDF, you can see exactly what type of protocols the device that you have supports. For today's example, I use the L476 Nucleo board. If I scroll down in the PDF, I can see that I have the L476 bootloader. Scrolling down to the PDF, I, I can see that there are many options. In the beginning of the table, you can see what type of clocks you can use with your microcontroller, how much RAM it needs, and flash. Now this type of flash is based at a different location from your program, so it's extra memory that you cannot use. It holds the bootloader configuration and software. And then you can see the different communication protocols that you can use for the bootloader. If you go to my previous video, you can see how I programmed the device using UART1 and UART2. For today's example, I'm going to use the USB. So we have DFU bootloader, and that's how we can program the microcontroller when it's even empty. The pinouts that I will need to use are PA11 for the D negative line, DM line, and the PA12 for the D positive line. There are no extra pull-up resistors required to connect to the USB. So the only thing you need to do is connect a USB cable to the exact pins that you need to use. In order to see exactly where PA12 and PA11 are located, we need to go to the Morpho pinouts. In the header, the Morpho header, on the right side of the Nucleo, you'll see that there is PA12 and PA11 right here on the right side. They are not marked as USB connector but we know that we need to use them because of the AN2606. So going step by step, first thing what we need to do is take a regular USB cable, cut the cable towards the connector that we're not going to use. So the one side is the PC side that we need to use and the other side is the part that we don't need to use. Strip down the wires and you will be left with four wires at least. Sometimes there are five wires, but we need only three of them. The wires that we're going to use are ground, the green one for data positive, and the white one for data negative. So coming back to AN2606, we have PA11, the, the USB negative line. The USB negative line is the white cable. The white cable is for PA11 and PA11 is this pin, pin number The next pin, that's it's PA12, positive line. The positive line is the green wire. The green wire will be connected to PA12 and that's pin, pin number six. We also need to connect the ground and the ground is located really close and that's pin number five. The next step is to download the software. You click on the link that I have in my description, click Get Software, and then you install the software. So after the software was installed, the only thing you need to do is reset the microcontroller in bootloader mode. Now in order to use the DFU mode, you need to put the microcontroller in bootloader mode. The STM32 has a boot zero pin when it's connected to ground, it operates normally. If it's connected to VCC, it enters bootloader mode. There are two ways to do this with the Nucleo demo board. One option is to connect boot zero pin to the user button pin. The user button pin is always connected to VDD. So after clicking reset, it will en immediately enter bootloader. If you want to run the software, you need to click the, the reset while holding the blue button, release the reset. This will enter the software regularly. So 
if you want to use the, f the first method with the York button, you need to connect pin number four with boot zero. This is the Morphu connector on the left side of the Nucleo. So pin number four with pin number eight. The other option, you can use a jumper cable, connect boot zero to VDD. This, as long as the jumper is connected, you will enter the boot bootloader. So coming back to the software, after the software was installed, you need to click the recent button in bootloader mode. And immediately the DFU can see that the microcontroller is connected. And now you can either erase, leave DFU mode, upload file, and do everything else that you are able to. To use the DFU as a programmer, you need to choose DFU type files. When installing the software, you get also a DFU file manager. The DFU file manager generates a DFU file from S19 hex file or bean file. So running this software, you click OK. You choose S19 hex file or bean file. Choose bean file as a test. After clicking the file, I add to list and I click OK. And then I click generate. It asks me where to save the file. And there we have it. We've generated the file. Coming back to the software, after generating the DFU file, we choose here to upload the file. We go and choose the file where we saved it from Bing to DFU, the file correctly, and then we can click upgrade. The upgrade was successful. If we click leave DFU mode, it will come back because the connector is still connected to boot zero pin. 